As a Blazers fan, it's impossible to ignore the impact that Jeremy Grant has had on the team this season. He's an all-star level forward, which is exactly what Damian Lillard has needed for years. Today we're going to discuss seven things that Jeremy Grant brings to the Blazers. In 2015, the Blazers had an all-star level forward by the name of LaMarcus Aldridge. And it's been seven years since we've had an all-star level forward but Jeremy Grant has finally brought that back to the team. He's six foot eight, six foot nine on a good day. But the real important thing is he has a seven foot three wingspan and plays above the basket as much as Aldridge ever did. Thank you, Neil Olshay, right? <laughs> Thank you for giving us players that Great are boss. that size sometimes, like Harkless and Aminu, but with no skill. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think you said it, you know, not only is he tall he's like he has a seven foot wingspan but he also seven foot three he also can play above the rim both on offense and defense which is something we've needed for a long time his ability to go up and challenge shots like against the backboard and also to finish lobs it's a threat we haven't had in a long time and as we're talking about his explosiveness right being able to finish above the rim not only is he the beneficiary of uh, off-ball movement and being able to finish lobs and stuff like that but he's getting to the rim in a lot of different ways Explosivity, Riley. Explosivity. Explosiveness. He's getting around guys, beating guys off the dribble. And for being a guy who's six foot eight, six foot nine, if you can beat your guy off the dribble, you're gonna get a lot of dunks. And it's not only on the offensive end that we're talking about his explosiveness. I've seen him rise up out of nowhere and swat shots into the stands. <laughs> Always fun to have that on the defensive end. The guy who can go up there and get those huge blocks, pin him off the glass. Just their momentum-changing plays, and we haven't had as many athletes able to do that lately. But getting blocks isn't even where Jeremy Grant's the most effective. He's most effective at the top of the zone, getting in passing lanes, deflecting balls, starting the break. Really, his explosiveness is best used for getting steals and deflections. Chauncey put him at that top of the zone for a reason. He fits Chauncey's scheme like a glove. He can go out there and impact even those primary ball handlers with his long wingspan. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when he gets those tip aways and he starts the fast break for the Blazers, he ends up being the beneficiary of that too and finishes at the other end, which is, it's been a while since we've seen someone who can, has the defensive skill to start a break and the offensive skill to finish a break. <laughs> and can Anybody remember Aminu on a fast break? Oh. It was like, whoa, all over the place. Or Robert Covington missing two dunks. <laughs> we don't even need to talk about that anymore. That's in the past, you guys. All right. Positivity here on From the Logo. But the reason that he's even able to be up there at the top of the key to start these breaks that have been so fun to watch all year is because he can guard one through five from Alvarado to Zion. You know, he can be, A to Z. He can play is that any what that position was? <laughs> and is able to impact every player on the other team. So one thing with a guy that that's that's that athletic is you can you're quicker to your rotations. A lot of the times in the previous years we've seen the likes of Carmelo Anthony, think players like that who when the first guy gets blown by, they either don't rotate at all or they're just three steps behind, slow to rotate. Grant is athletic enough and quick enough that he can hit that rotation. And that helps in guarding one through five. Because when you when you can get to your man before they make the move, that's it. And Jeremy Grant's excelled at it. He's like the prototypical forward who can switch too. When they set a screen on him or have his guy come up and set a screen, he can switch right on to the primary ball handler, and it's like no issue whatsoever. And that really kind of leads into the state of the NBA today, where you want a lot of switchable players, where those screens, you can just mask those. You don't have to fight over the screen. There's not that split second of time for the guard to make a move or the, the big man to roll. That's all that they need now in the NBA, or you know, players like Dame, Steph Curry, they just need just a into daylight to make you pay but enough about his defense let's talk about how jeremy grant can score at all three levels the dude is averaging a career high this year at 22.4 points per game and he's like the third option on the team mm -hmm. yeah he's not just getting that because he's the best player on a bad team he's getting quality looks amongst a lot of other quality players he's scoring more on this team than he was when he was the number one option exactly. on a terrible barren detroit <laughs> team yeah not only is he getting these points with dunks and close twos his three-point shooting this year has been insane he's nine points up on his three-point percentage from last year 
up to over 40 or just about 45%. A 45% three-point shooter taking the volume that he's taking is incredible. And he's getting a lot of these threes off of catch and shoots, right? He's the beneficiary of penetration from the guards. He's not having to make these moves with the ball. He's just able to spot up and make these shots. But this is something that I didn't expect from him at all. I expected him to come in and be the poster guy, you know, catch some lobs and everything. But being able to shoot 45%, at a high volume is found gold. You know, even if that percentage drops a little bit, that's not the end of the world. If he shoots 40% from three, we've yeah. needed that next to Lillard for how long <laughs> yeah. at that spot? So yeah. not Better a bad than thing. anything we've had in years. Yeah, and I remember Mo Harkless being afraid to shoot threes because his contract said he had to shoot 35%. <laughs> so he just wouldn't shoot. He just would sit there because he was at 35.1%. The Myers Leonard pump fake and drive. Oh my. So he's got the mid range ability of maybe like an Aldridge type. But he can also slash to the rim like a Norman Powell type. He, mm-hmm. Like you said earlier, he blows by his man. He can hit the mid-range if they can test the three or at the rim, you know, because the defenses are designed now to take away the rim and three. Grant can hit the mid-range if he has to on ISOs. I mean, it's not the best shot, but it's a good. Sh- it's an available shot for him, and he can make it. So having a wing that's 6'9 and is a three-level scorer is found money. He might be a four-level scorer for all we know. His post fadeaway is pretty true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I was gonna bring up. Like, not only can he score off the dribble from the mid-range, but if he gets a, a smaller defender or just a less athletic defender on him, he can just turn and rise over him like Dirk. We talked about Aminu briefly. I talked about Aminu briefly. I love to talk about Aminu. Let's because it was mention him again. Such a cringy <laughs> thing sometimes. <laughs> Who at the end of the game? Did you not want to see shooting the ball? Or touching the ball. Al Farouk Aminu? Is that who you're referring to? I mean, Aminu, Harkless, any of the Blazers' wings in the past. So I think it's... Yeah, and then talking about playoff series with, like, when you get matched up against a good team like Golden State, I remember in years past, they'd take away CJ and Damian Lillard and force those wings to shoot. You got Al Farouk Aminu and Mo Harkless taking corner threes. I'd much rather have Jeremy Grant in that position. The Pelican series, when the Blazers got swept... There was a statistic that showed the Blazers were getting the most wide open shots out of any team in the playoffs and they got swept. It's because who was shooting the shots? Aminu and Harkless and it didn't work. But now, Grant, they can't do that. Not only is Jeremy Grant hitting these shots, but he's hitting them in big moments. Threes, turnaround fadeaway jumpers, layups at the rim. He's scoring at all three levels in big moments. He's already had two, three buzzer beaters this year. No words necessary, right? <laughs> he he has a great clutch god on his team already. So when all the attention's on Dame, and mm-hmm. he's even done it when Dame's been out, let's be fair. But Dame as the primary option in the clutch is about as good as you can get. Grant as another option in the clutch. Simons has been clutch. He's been hitting clutch free throws this year. Yeah, this isn't is. a Simons video, but the fact that you have three different options and one's a 6'9 forward that can be clutch, that is just such a boon for your team. Exactly, because... Other teams aren't letting Dame get the ball easily uh, in those last second possessions anymore. And so if they, you know, put a couple guys shading toward him and that leaves room for Grant to go toward the bucket, like in his uh, turnaround, you know, catch and shoot mid-range. His move against the Lakers, too, when he went Mm -hmm. to the rim and laid it up over Davis and LeBron, it was because there was all that attention out out on the perimeter. Yeah, so to be able to get a game winner that's not a falling away three-pointer out of bounds over two hands from a 6'3 guard is a really, really (laughs) nice luxury to have. Mm -hmm. We as Portland fans love players that want to play in Portland. Jeremy Grant was born in Portland. His dad played for Portland. Rumbling, you know, rumors out of Detroit were talking about how Jeremy wanted to play with Dame. Dame and Jeremy were talking at the Olympics. They were making a plan to play together. He actually wants to play here. They already asked him recently, you know, what about re-signing next year? He said Portland has the leg up on everybody. We want guys that are good that want to play here. The fact that he's a, he could be an all-star this year and wants to play here. Come on, man. I mean, along with all the stuff, our other stuff we talked about, the wanting to play in Portland is like the cherry on top. We've already had our fill of forwards that don't want to play in Portland. LaMarcus Aldridge. I'd much rather have a guy that wants to play in Portland, that wants to be here for the long haul. I mean, Damian Lillard is the perfect example of that. I want a 6'9 version of Damian Lillard. Yeah, and if they can be a duo that stays with Portland for a long time moving forward while we get a couple other pieces built around them, then, I mean, that could be a championship core. 
And that's what Damien's needed for a while, you know. L.A. could have stayed and could have built that, you know, a few years back. We're doing it now instead. I'd rather, ha- I'd rather have Jeremy than L.A. Let's go. And there's seven things that Jeremy Grant has brought to the Blazers this year. If you'd like to see our thoughts on Anthony Simon's season so far, click here.